Hi everybody, as all of you know that we have been continuing a playlist of GCP Cloud Associate exam from last few days. So this is part 2 of Google Compute Engine that we have discussed in our previous video. So before this we have already uploaded a few parts of this playlist. I request all of you to please watch those videos before watching this video. So in last video we have discussed about Google Compute Engine in detail. We have also discussed about virtual machines. So in this video we will continue this topic to give more details about that. So let's start our video. So guys all of you know that in last video we have discussed about virtual machines. So guys while selecting virtual machines GCP will give you few options for you. Like you want a standard virtual machine, you want preemptable virtual machine or you want a spot virtual machine. So guys a standard VM is normal VM. You will be charged according to your need and it is available to you 24 hours. Okay. But what is in the case of preemptible VM? So preemptible VMs are very cheap, I mean cost effective. But this VM is not reliable. Why I am saying this? Because let's say you choose the option of preemptible VM. So Google will give you one preemptible VM. But Google can stop this VM at any point of time within 24 hours of start. Let's say you have a scheduled VM today at 12 o'clock. So Google can stop your preemptible VM anytime before 12 p.m. tomorrow. So it means that we cannot use preemptible VM for our day to day very important jobs. You can use preemptible VM for non immediate bad jobs. I mean the bad jobs which are of not much importance. You can use preemptible VM in that. Okay. It will help you in saving the cost. But for real time jobs you cannot use preemptible VM. Now what is a spot VM? So if you go to the spot VM then you can see it is written that do not have 24 hour limit. I mean preemptible VM maximum 24 hour times is given to you and in between those time Google can stop that VM at any point of time. But in a spot VM there is no time limit. I mean if you start your spot VM today then Google will not mandatorily stop this VM within 24 hours. I mean if there is no need for VMs for Google Cloud then it will allow your spot VM to continue. There is no time limit. But if there any need arises for Google Cloud for any VM, then it can stop your spot VMs also. But it cannot stop your standard VMs. Okay. So guys, it is bit more expensive than your preemptible VM. Okay. But less expensive than a standard VM. Okay. So if you look at the discount, then you have two types of discount like automatic use discount and committed use discount. Okay? So what is automatic use discount? So let's say you are running your VM instance for let's say 75% of billing month. Okay. So in that case, what GCP will say that since you are running your VM instances more than 75% of billing month, we are giving you 25% free discount. Similarly, they have provisioned threshold for different resources. For example, let's say for any resource, if they have provisioned that if you use this resource for 60% of billing month, then next 40% will give a discount. That is automatic use discount. Now we have committed use discount. Let's say you already know that you will be running this resource for next one year or three years. So if you declare this in advance to GCP, then they will give you some committed use discount at the beginning itself. Now let's go to the last topic that is migration policy and availability policy. So guys, what is this migration policy and availability policy? So let's say you are running your VM instances. Okay. And after running your instances for two to three days, you feel that you need a software update or hardware update on your instances. So in that case, in order to update those software, you have to stop your VM. Okay. But if you are going to stop your VM, then in that case, your users will be affected. So this is not a good practice. So that's why the concept of live migration was introduced in GCP. What it means is that GCP will provision you a new VM. And on that VM, you can update your software and slowly and slowly you can migrate your traffic from older VM to newer VM instance. Okay. So this is live migration and continuing to that, they have given different options like on host maintenance and second is automatic restart. So what is meant by automatic restart is that let's say your VM got crashed due to network failure or due to overload or due to any problem. Okay. So what GCP will do, it will automatically will restart your VM because it is stopped or it is crashed without any intervention. You are not required to do anything. GCP will automatically restart that. But while automatic restart, it will take some time. 
because it has to allocate resource allocate storage allocate network so while doing this it will take some time and during that time your users will face a problem that this server is down or this app is down now the second one is on host maintenance so in on host maintenance what happens is that let's say on your vm some maintenance activity needs to be done so in that case what gcp will do they will provision you a new vm and on that vm all the new facilities will be incorporated and after that it becomes ready they will start migrating traffic from your older vms to your newer vms and after that they will terminate your old vm so this is the policy of on host maintenance now in compute engine we have the last topic is basic and important compute engine command so compute engine command starts with g cloud as you know that google storage command starts with gs util but google compute engine command starts with g cloud now as you know that you have different regions zones and you want to set those regions and zones so how can you do that for your project so you have to run this command in your gcp terminal let's say you want to set the zone in that case you have to run g cloud config set compute slash zone here you have to give zone value let's say you want to set the project value of a project in that case you have to run g cloud config set core slash project here project value so here you have to observe one thing that while setting the region and zone you have to use compute but while setting the project value you have to use core okay this is very important now the last important point is let's say you have created multiple projects in your machine and different project have different different configurations now you want to execute commands with a specific configuration so in that case you have to use command g cloud config configurations activate and then name of that configuration so if you use that then that configuration will be activated and on that configuration you can execute your required commands okay so guys i have tried my best to make you aware about google compute engine in detail and in next video we will cover about google kubernetes engine google app engine google cloud function and cloud run and after that in next 4 to 5 videos we will be solving only questions based on these topics